Listen online now at letstalkfaith.com or download our free Faith Talk Tampa app now at the Google Play Store. The following program is sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Get ready with your legal questions and call Patrick now. 877-943-9673. Again, that's 877-943-9673. The Law Office is open. And now your host, Patrick Smith. Welcome to a very special edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. For those of you unfamiliar, that's a little tip of the cap and a show of solidarity to our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine, a little tidbit of the Ukrainian National Anthem this morning. And uh, just want to start by offering up all of our prayers and support to all of those of you out there who may have friends or family in the uh, Ukrainian region. And of course, it hits extremely close to home here with us as we have Yana, the Belarusian producer, uh, with us. And I talked to Yana and uh, I asked her about if she wanted to give comment on kind of what, from the Belarusian perspective anyway, is going on in in the Ukraine. And uh, Yana was brave enough to say she's happy to share her thoughts. So I want to start at the top of the show. We're going to answer your legal questions today. And that number, if you want to call in, is 877 877- Nine four three nine six seven three. Again, that phone number eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three. And I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, local Central Florida attorney. You can email your question, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. But I just, as I came into the studio and kind of leading up in show prep throughout the week, and just it just kept weighing on me. How can we not start the show? by giving attention to this terrible act of tyranny that's currently happening and unfolding before our very eyes. And so it just seemed almost inappropriate or disrespectful not to start the show. So so here we go. So uh, let's go and let's talk to Yana. Yana, dobre utra. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you Yana. for having me. A- absolutely. So Yana, just real simply, from a Belarusian's perspective, tell us what's going on in the Ukraine right now. So um, this is war uh, in Ukraine. This is war, and uh, it's war not against Russian people. Uh, I, m- I mean, Russian people against Ukrainian people. This is war uh, Putin from uh, Ukrainian freedom. Um, in if Putin stops the war. There, w- there will be no war. If Ukrainians stop the war, there will be no Ukrainian. So um, uh, all our prayers and all our thoughts, all, uh, all, all we're thinking right now is uh, only about this situation, our brothers and sisters, family we have in Ukraine, um, because it's, it seems very terrible because you know, we all relatives, Belarusians, Ukrainian, and Russians, and I have family in Belarus. Um, my my cousin lives in Ukraine, in Kiev right now, and um, I have relative in Russia. And uh, we can see uh, thousands of people came out to protest against this war in Russia, and all over the world. But uh, it's two different concepts. Putin. And Russia and um, Lukashenko and Belarusians. So Putin and Russian people, it's not the same. Same in Belarus. And um, so people not support our presidents. And Russian people, many Russian people not support Putin. Uh, so there is, th- this is terrible situation. And um, uh, um, you know, we all worried about our relatives and friends in Ukraine, and um, this, this situation is terrible. And um, we're thinking, how 
this situation is how this war it possible to happen and it's strategy to our people today and yana you mentioned your cousin is currently in kiev yes and he is of fighting age as we were discussing correct? yes so he... and many of my friends also lives in kiev and they can't leave kiev because of they uh, they need they supposed to stay in the basement there's a lockdown yeah, yeah. There's and a now they the 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 lockdown is starting at 5 p.m it was 10 p.m they bumped it back to 5 p.m yeah it's third day today with yeah lockdown. so folks just to make it real for you i mean there it is and uh yana i don't think you realize it but your statement about if putin doesn't fight there's no war yep. if the ukrainians don't fight there's no ukraine yep that couldn't better summarize the situation and just to give you folks some you know sort of a glimpse behind the curtain when we were prepping for this uh, I said to Yana, I said, you know, I think you're going to do great. And she goes, well, I'm nervous about saying the wrong thing. And I said, uh, what do you mean the wrong thing, like sort of a politically incorrect thing? Folks, just to give you some perspective on how great we have it here. She goes, no, I'm not worried about saying the wrong thing politically incorrect because I'm in America. <laughs> and that's okay here. But just to let you know, that's how special this yeah, country yeah. is. And, you know, uh, if uh, our people today uh, in Belarus, they will um, go to protest and they say they were the voice. They have their voice against the situation, like no war in Ukraine. They will go to the prison. Same in Russia. People go to go out to protest and uh, they go to the prison because they have their voice. So when you wonder what we're fighting for and yeah. what the Ukrainians are fighting for, this is it. I mean, this is the very real threat. And it's the same fight that Ronald Reagan was fighting back in the 80s, and it's reared its ugly head today. And now the question remains, what are we going to do to help our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine? But, Yana, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thanks. And, of course, I think I speak for everyone listening right now. We are all holding up the entire nation of Ukraine, and especially your family and your, your friends there in the Ukraine, especially those in the fighting forces. I mean, these are people who were, last week, were going to work the next day. And now, all of a sudden, they're literally fighting for their country. Just imagine what that is. I mean, the closest thing our generation had to anything like that was, you know, 9-11. And then my grandfather's generation, it was Pearl Harbor. And it was something like that that took this jarring act to drag us in. And folks, when we look at, is it Leave? Is it pronounced Leave, the the western city that uh, the Russians have invaded? Lvov. 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 So, so Lvov is, I understand, 120 miles from Poland. Yeah. And if those troops spill into Poland, that's a NATO nation. Yes, this will be another war. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, folks, just to uh, realize how serious it is, and the battle that we're fighting for is a battle for freedom, because a threat to freedom anywhere is a threat to freedom everywhere. And that's the issue that we're facing. So, but again, Yana, thank you for your bravery and for speaking yeah. up and sharing your thoughts. And thank you, Patrick, to understand and support. Oh, absolutely. Situation. The Thanks. American people, I don't speak for them. Uh, in total, in any f official capacity, but I think I speak for him when I say, you know, we stand in solidarity with the brothers and sisters of the uh, the Ukrainian nation. So God bless the uh, the nation of Ukraine this morning. So a little bit different start to the show here today, but sort of it was the 800 pound gorilla in the room. I mean, I think we had to address it. So. 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of our program today. I'm local Central Florida attorney Patrick Smith. You're now listening on one of 14. That's right, up to 14 stations carrying the show. And a uh, special welcome to those of you listening on Sun Radio down in Sun City Center. We especially appreciate you guys listening on your community radio. And all our newer listeners on 102.5 The Bone. So, again, that's one of our newer stations that have joined the uh, family of stations for the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. So, a very special welcome to all of you guys. For those of you new to the show, I'm Attorney Patrick Smith, local Central Florida attorney, a sixth-generation native Floridian. 
born and raised here in the Sunshine State, actually raised in Polk County, and I currently live over in beautiful Pinellas County. So all over the state my entire life, and then left for three years just to go to law school at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And then as soon as I graduated, I skedaddled me and my family right back to the Sunshine State. So that's a little bit about me. If you have a legal question this morning, this show is dedicated to helping you. 877 943 nine six seven three eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three or you can email your question patrick at attorney patrick smith dot com patrick at attorney patrick smith dot com so i had a very interesting question come into the law office uh this week and this is not our at the law office this week segment but it did happen at the law office so this was the question that came in a uh, grandmother reached out and said, hey, I've, uh, I'm in a situation where I'm legal guardian uh, for someone. And we're filling out a FAFSA application. So for uh, college aid for undergraduate admissions and support. And the question was, is my income as the legal guardian reportable? And I had never had this question. And it's not, it is kind of a legal question, but it's also just sort of a practical question. I was like, thinking about Peter, the intern, uh, who's not with us today. He's out on a personal matter. But at the end of the day, uh, thinking about, you know, Peter, the intern applying for law schools and all the kids this time of year who are getting ready for school just might be a good public service announcement. So if you're in a situation, apparently, according to FAFSA's rules and regulations, if you are in a situation where you have a foster parent or legal guardian, uh, they do not get reported. More importantly, their income does not get reported on that FAFSA application. Uh, furthermore, if you were emancipated as a minor or if you were ever a, uh, a ward of the state after the age of 13 or if your parents are deceased, you're considered what we call an independent student. So that's how you would get reflected on that application. It wouldn't be a situation where uh, the you know uncle or legal guardian that wound up raising you now steps in uh, in uh, loco parentis to basically fill that role and have their income get reported. So interesting rules there about FAFSA applications, but the short version on that is you wanna make sure that you sit down with a good admissions counselor. There are professional companies that help you do this. You can also go to particular universities. They have admissions counselors there to help you with that particular university in case there's specific rules and regulations within that university. So great question that came in this week and they were nice enough to offer the, me the opportunity to share it on the radio. So I thought I would share that with you guys. So. If you have young students out there getting ready to go off to school, make sure you know your FAFSA rules, do's, and don'ts. And speaking of students, for those of you with college-age students, coming up is the 50th annual Model Senate at Stetson University. It will be conducted March 24th through the 26th. Yours truly will be making an appearance at the event, and this is an event where College students, college age students from all around the country come out and after applying and being accepted, get the opportunity to present and portray an actual U.S. Senator in a three-day competition. It includes debate on the Senate floor. It includes committee meetings. It includes investigations, interviewing uh, other uh, witnesses as part of hearings. It is the real deal. It is the incubator for tomorrow's uh, members of Congress, and it is a fantastic event. If you want more information or if you want to get someone involved, go to stetsonuniversity.edu forward slash model senate. stetsonuniversity.edu forward slash model senate and check out that information. So if you've got a young politically driven college age student who likes to argue and they're on their way to law school or something like that, this is a great chance for them to compete and put those arguing skills to use and get some awards and some other goodies. I'm not really sure what the jackpot is as far as prizes anymore. And back in my day, because I was a participant at this event, a four-year participant in the event, and uh, they used to give out nice little plaques and everything. And so I don't know. I have to check and see what they're giving out as prizes now. But again, for those of you interested in having a college-age student compete in the Stetson University's 50th annual Model Senate, visit stetson.edu forward slash Model Senate. All righty, let's go to Jack and St. Pete. Jack, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning. Good morning, Jack. How can we help? <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I uh, uh, contracted to have a restoration shop uh, do a restoration on an uh, antique car, and they didn't perform, so... Uh, I, I, I went to motor vehicles and, uh, and made a complaint. This was in New York. 
And uh, it went to a hearing. Uh, the judge looked at all the information and ruled that uh, the restoration shop must either return the car and all my parts to me uh, or pay $125,000 restoration. So that was the ruling from the court. Now, the problem I'm having right now, and I have an attorney in, in New York, uh, is collecting that $125,000. Motor Vehicle says, well, we're not a collection agency. We took it to a hearing. You got the ruling. And uh, the attorney general in New York is saying, well, we're not a collection agency either. So we're having, how, how, how do we get the, get the court ruling, uh, uh, the effect of the court ruling? It's a question of New York state statute. So number one, you have an attorney, Jack. So I would just say, ask yes. your attorney, how do we enforce this order? In Florida, there's procedures for it. Uh, but they would be completely irrelevant for this question. So at the end of the day, I think right. that you just call your New York state attorney and you say to him, walk me through the procedures on how now that we've prevailed and we've successfully gotten this order saying we get $125,000, how do we go about collecting right. it? And more importantly, how do we go about making sure that this uh, order stays in effect until we've collected the full amount? making sure the order doesn't expire. So those are the key issues that I would address with your New York counsel and make sure that that's addressed adequately under New York state statute. I wish I could give you a more specific answer, but two things are working against me. One, you already have an attorney, and number two, it's a New York state case. Well, no, and I understand that. And what I was looking for is some suggestions, which you have given me, and uh, and a good point, and make sure that this doesn't expire, and uh, uh, contact New York state attorney general, right? I don't think that's a bad starting point, but I think that starting with your attorney you currently have is always the best thing to do. Right. Can I okay. ask you? Thank you very much. Can I ask you? I'm just curious now. Since the order was for 125 thousand, do you mind sharing what kind of car it was? Uh, it was it was an antique uh, Packard station wagon. Ooh, you have taste, sir. You have taste, Jack. Thank you. Well, great. So, is it all better now? Is is what? Is the car, the Packard, is it all fixed? Is it primo condition again? Well, no, it was, it was not, not completed, and that was, the, that was the complaint. It was tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So we filed a complaint, and uh, we wanted the car back, and he refused to give the car back, although all the bills were all paid. Uh, he, he wanted additional money because he claimed he lost money, and uh, he totally uncooperative. He didn't even show up for the hearing. Wow. I know a great restoration guy so jack if you get it back and you want to finish that job and you need a referral let me know and you can call me at the office i'll be happy to put you in touch with one okay all right, all right. thank you very much jack good luck keep us posted let me know how it turns out all with you and your right. new york attorney okay all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of our program today, 877 943 Nine six seven three, or email your question Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com Alright, next let's go to Pinellas County and let's talk to Jane. Jane, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Good and morning, thank you Jane. Thank for your service to the community. Oh, thank you for uh, your kind words, Jane. That means the world to me. They're well deserved. Okay. <laughs> um, my my question might be a little unique. Um you are familiar with the Boy Scout abuse thing that's been going on for some time? Yes, and if you're going to talk uh, about that, Jane, I have no problem, but I'll remind you, we got a lot of families listening, so maybe be sensitive to some of the facts uh, you described. Uh, okay. I know. It, it, yes, sir, I'm very mindful of that. They were supposed to have the um, the judgment to, to settle in court whether they were the... Um, the victims were to be paid or not, and that was supposed to happen Tuesday, the 22nd of this month. Yes, ma'am. And, and I didn't know whether you might be aware of whether they made a decision on it or not. I haven't heard. So if there's a decision out there, I'm not aware of it. But no, ma'am, is the short answer. I don't know the answer if there was a decision okay, made. So, so you said a ruling was expected on the 22nd? Yes, they have um, 80,000 members or, excuse me, victims worldwide. Well, sometimes these 14, decisions get delayed, but like like I said, when, you know, with what we started the top of the show with, with the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, a lot of these other news topics are getting buried. So it may be yes, worthwhile I know, just searching a little oh, bit for it and seeing what you can find. 
Oh, well, 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 thank you. Do you know? And I do appreciate it. Do you know which court was making the ruling? Well, from what I can understand, they have 80,000 victims worldwide. It's an international thing. And uh, the Delaware court is handling the bankruptcy for the Boy Scouts. And they have, uh, two months ago, I think they had raised Two billion payouts for the uh, for the victims, and now it's up to three billion for wow. the for the victims. Wow! The uh, ruling judge in this particular situation um, needed seventy five percent votes. They had a, a thing where everyone voted as to whether to proceed with the. Uh, court action or to accept $3,800 and let it go. And they have, um, I think they only have 73.5%. Wow. So it's, it's, it's rather interesting. They have 70, 73.5% for the votes and the court ruling, uh, excuse me, the court uh, expectation is 75%. So, so it's kind of an interesting thing to see whether the judge will allow the 73.5% other than the 75% for the victims. Okay, well, we'll see. Well, let, let us research this throughout the week, and we'll see what information we can come up with, Jane, okay? Okay, and just, just one more thing, sir. They have um, 14 legal firms, which are supposed to be very high-end, very appropriate, to cover the whole thing for the 80,000 people worldwide. That might be of interest to you. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure and, I, and I do thank you. Oh, Jane, I appreciate it. I'm sure there's a lot of high-level litigators there working to to attempt to right some wrongs that were done, but uh, you and I both know there's no amount of money that can right the wrongs that were done there. No, and... absolutely not. So it, 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 was, it was a very clean question, sir. Yeah, well, <laughs> no. I appreciate you handling but, but it with such really grace. In, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is an interesting topic. It'll be interesting to see what the ruling says and to kind of read the dicta in the ruling. But, uh, Jane, we appreciate your question. More importantly, we appreciate the grace and tact with which you handled presenting the question. Thank you for that, Jane. Thank you so much. You do have a nice day. You too, Jane. Have a great day. All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. You'll be part of our program today, 877-943-9673. Seven three open phone lines. We'll get you and your question right on the air. Eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three, and your question can be on any topic at all. We had a collections question, enforcement of a judgment to start the show, and then a question regarding the uh, potential outcome in the uh, Boy Scouts of America lawsuit. So your question it can be anywhere, any legal topic at all. We're happy to assist any way we can. Eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three, or email me, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com or give me a call now 877-943-9673 all right let's go ahead and give out the office phone number still getting plenty of requests to do that during the show and to do it slowly so we will do our best to do it slowly 877-754-6764 again that office phone line if you want to call the office during the week and book an appointment with yours truly, 877-754-6764. You said, but where are we booking this appointment, Patrick? Well, we have offices all over the state to serve you. We have offices right uh, here in uh, Pinellas County in uh, Seminole. I was there uh, most of the day yesterday. And then we also have offices in Hillsborough County, uh, down in Sun City Center, Tampa. Uh, we have offices all over the Sunshine State to best serve you offices in Polk as well in beautiful Haines City, Florida. So to schedule an appointment at any of those locations, 877-754-6764. Again, that office line, if you want to schedule your appointment, 877-754-6764. But to be part of our program today, a different 877 number, 877-943-9673. Again, that toll-free number to be part of our program today, 877 877- 943-9673, or you can email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com.
Seminole.com. All right, let's go to Seminole and let's talk to Rick. Let's talk to Rick about child support. Rick, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Thanks, man. Appreciate you taking my call. Sure, thanks, Rick. I, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward question here. Uh, my daughter turns 18 on St. Patrick's Day, and uh, I know I have to pay March, and uh, I also have to pay, she graduates at the end of April. So I know I have to pay until she graduates. What do I do um, after April? Do I just stop paying? Do I have to sit there and and do something with a court? What Uh, I would recommend you do is go back and revisit the original order that was put in place regarding child support. It's going to speak to that. I I did that last week. What did it say? Well, it, it said that I still, you know, it doesn't just end on her 18th birthday. It goes through the end of the school year which is one more month. Then I would pay that other month because I don't know what the child support is, but hiring an attorney to somehow attempt a petition to modify to get that month chopped off is certainly going to cost more more than likely no, than yeah. that month. So, uh, uh, well, I, I, I plan on paying that month, but do I, my thing is, do I just... Is that it? Do I just stop paying and, and it's all over? So you had, a, you had a family law attorney that represented you, correct? Yes, I did. Yeah, I would reach out to them since they're most familiar with the case and say, hey, this is coming up. It's ending. Do I need to do anything? Uh, if for some reason that attorney's not available or whatever and you need a second opinion, I'm happy to put you in touch with the family law attorney with whom I work most regularly and be happy to answer your question. But they're going to need to see all that paperwork and to sort of say, yeah. okay, here's where you were, here's where you're headed, here's what you need to do. As far, I, I know where you're going with this. Is there some sort of notice of compliance I have to file with the court, you know, with the banks, uh, the check stubs for all the payments up until the termination or something like that? And the short answer is I don't know. It's going to be a family law okay. question. So I would start with your family law attorney. And Well, your... he's, not, he's not around anymore. So Okay, uh... that, that does happen. Sometimes we retire. So at the end of the day, uh, give me a call at the office on Monday. I'll put you in touch with Ryan, who's the uh, family law attorney that I work with most regularly. Ryan will take a look at everything and give you a complimentary consultation. Okay, Rick? All right, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll look at your website and get the uh, number. That'll be great. We'll look oh, forward to talking or to I'll you. Just, or I'll just... Turn the radio back up when I hang up, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll jot it down. That's fine. Yeah, you're welcome to. So I'll give out the office line here before the end of the show. Got it. All right. Thank you, Rick. You got it, man. All right. Bye. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Again, I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673. Now we got a great family law, child support question in the bag. I, I think Rick's smart about that, and I think the last thing you want to do is just sort of ignore it, even though it is terminating. Uh, making sure that you've crossed those T's, dotted the I's as far as terminating that successfully so you don't get in trouble with a judge. Being in trouble with a judge is generally never a good thing, so you try to stay out of trouble with judges. And, and thankfully, you know, judges are are very reasonable people I've found over the years, so you really kind of have to go out of your way to, to make one angry. They're pretty, they're pretty lenient as far as understanding and compassionate. So if you get a judge angry, you've really done something wrong. 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of our program today. You can also email your question to Patrick at attorney Patrick Smith. Dot com. couple of personal appearances slash speaking engagements coming up this week. First of all, on Wednesday, March 2nd, yours truly, will be giving a presentation to the Military Officers of America Association in beautiful Sun City Center. So we will be presenting at 11 a.m. at the Military Officers Association of America Association, and that will be uh, 11 a.m. this Wednesday, March 2nd. For more information, you can reach out to the office. That number at the office again, 877-754-6764. And you can RSVP for this event. Again, I will be presenting 11 a.m. in beautiful Sun City Center for the Military Officers of America Association. But that's not all. There's more. On Thursday, March the 3rd, yours truly will be making a personal appearance at the studios of one of our current listening family stations, Gospel 90.3 WLVF, out of beautiful Haines City, Florida, the voice of Landmark Baptist Church. Uh, for their annual Restore-a-thon. A lot of these local stations, uh, they run on donations, and they do a Restore-a-thon every year. And I remember listening to Restore-a-thon as a boy growing up, uh, back when a guy by the name of Brother Rich Lemon 
uh, was doing the show, and, uh, and he it was absolutely just Rich's enthusiasm. And they have a beautiful plaque and memorial up for Rich in the studio. Rich was just infectious, and uh, he's part of the reason why I got into radio because he just loved uh, radio so much. You could you could feel it uh, coming through the airwaves when Brother Rich was on the air. So. I'm looking forward to Restorathon, and I always look forward to it because it reminds me of Brother Rich and uh, all the good work he did there for WLVF over the years. So if you're in the Haines City area this past week or this next week and you want to come out and shake my hand, I'll be there from 4 to 5 p.m. during that 4 to 5 o'clock hour for Restorathon in Haines City, Florida at the WLVF Studios for Gospel 90.3. If you're out there and you say, boy, I wish Patrick would come to our event, that can happen. So you can actually schedule me for a public appearance or a speaking engagement. If you want to do so, reach out to my office and any of the ladies there will be happy to get that scheduled for you. That uh, number again to call the office and schedule that appearance, 877-754-6764, 877-754-6764. Or you can email Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com and we'll be happy to coordinate. But to be part of our program today, 877-943-9673. Open phone lines, 877-943-9673. And let's go next to Why Mama and talk to Tom about malpractice. Tom, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, Tom. How can we help you today? Well, I'm having a problem acquiring an attorney. I have a malpractice suit. I have I took my leg off unnecessarily. Oh my gosh! And uh, yes, and well, as a matter of fact, I have I'm got I'm getting a prosthetic here. Hopefully, in the next month or so. But I've been in a wheelchair. I, I was in the hospital for eight and a half months. Uh, ended up in Tampa. They saved my life over there. Tom, uh, I'm so sorry. So you you so you're you're saying that the the wrong leg was they were supposed to remove one leg and they took off the other one no 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 i had a stent in my leg that had a problem and instead of doing a bypass he cut my leg off okay all right so okay so i was con I, that's still terrible let's agree tom but the situation i was imagining <laughs> in my mind is they were supposed to take off your left leg they took off your right your good leg and then they had to go back and take off the left leg, too. So now you have neither leg. So I was thinking it was that scenario. So your position is they were treating you for one procedure. They went ahead yeah. and decided, hey, we got to go ahead and take this leg off. And now you're without a leg. Is that accurate? Right. Okay. They, they, they didn't get my permission nor my wife's permission to cut my leg off. You're just one dollar short. Woke, I woke up no leg. You're one dollar. Well, first right. of all, I'm sorry that happened. That I mean, I can only – the trauma – of waking up yeah. and seeing, oh, I used to have a leg there. And, oh, my gosh, yes, Tom, I'll say a special prayer for you and your wife. God bless you. But the the short version is you're a dollar short and a day late. Last week yeah. uh, we had on the show uh, attorney Jared Bailey, who's our personal injury attorney that we work with. Uh -huh. And I'll be happy to put you in touch with Jared next week, and he'll give you a complimentary consultation to kind of walk you through what your rights options are as far as uh, pursuing any okay. potential malpractice case in light of that. But again, Tom, I'm, how are you doing? Are you recovering okay? I mean, how are you feeling? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good. I'm recovering. Were you a veteran uh, by chance? Yes, I am. Which which branch of the service were you with, Tom? I was in the Army. Well, so was my father. Um, wh wh my father was yeah. 127 Wolfhounds with the 25th Infantry, 1969, in Vietnam. What, were, what years were you in, and what did you do for the Army? I was in... In Vietnam in 1970, I was uh, armor. You might have run into my dad. He was the one in the camouflage, and he wore the steel pot. Did you see a guy like that? Yeah, I did. That, that was him. That was my dad. So, <laughs> Now, my dad was a mortarman and carried a grenade launcher and was that first wave of invasion into Cambodia in 1970. So you oh. guys did overlap there. So uh, what did you say yeah. you did for th for the Army while you were in? I was an armor. I was in a tank. Ooh. I was a tank commander. That's kind of like being the guy on the 50 cal on a destroyer. Like, you're the guy they're going for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It takes a special <laughs> kind of guy to do that, Tom. Thank you for your service, and welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, give us a call next week. We'll make sure you get taken care of one way or the other. And, Tom, as a former veteran, since we started the show with this, I just want to get your thoughts. What do you think about what's going on in the Ukraine? I think it's a, I think it's a bad move. 
Do you think the U.S. winds up involved or not? I think we will. If I was able, I'd join back up. <laughs> now, now, now you sound like my dad. Every time I thank yeah. my dad for his service, he said I'd do it all over again. Well, I would. Yeah, I have. Uh, I haven't met a Vietnam vet yet who who doesn't say that. But, you know, we talk about Vietnam vets, and we thank them for their service. But those were the guys that, remember, when they came home, they weren't getting the ticker tape parade. They weren't. Uh, no, we were getting spit on. Yeah. And that, that disgusts me. Uh, to this day, that, that bothers me that that happened. Because these guys were called on to serve, and they went and they served their nation proudly, and they came home to that. But you know what I, what I love? It speaks to the character of our servicemen, those men and women who did that uh, and came back, they still held their heads high. They still do to this day. And, and I, right. I love that. I think that speaks to the character of our military men and women uh, who served this great nation of ours. But again, Tom, thank you for your service. Well, thank you. All right. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Good luck with that leg. Uh, and we will do our special, uh, our special best to make sure you get in touch with Jared next week and get that squared away or at least the ball rolling, okay? Yes, I would love to, but I've talked to five different attorneys, and they're afraid to take this case. That just means you haven't found the right one yet, Tom. Uh, that's right. That's why I'm calling you. All right. We'll get you squared away, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a great Saturday. All righty. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673. It's hard for me to talk about Vietnam vets without getting choked up a little bit. I just think of my dad, and that gets me thinking of my, my grandfather, who was a a Navy veteran for two Korea and Vietnam. He loved, he loved the United States Navy and this country. And there was a wonderful video that they posted about uh, sailors from World War II reuniting with their Japanese enemies and shaking hands and, and getting along. And I was just finding myself, and I don't know, maybe my dad can tell me, I don't think my... My grandfather, to the day he passed, I don't think he was ready to shake anybody's hand over anything uh, after that war. But uh, but again, to all the servicemen and women out there, thank you for everything you do. You guys go so uncelebrated and unrecognized, and you sacrifice yourselves and literally put your lives on the line daily for everyone. So I can't. I don't think we thank you guys enough. So again, if you're a member of the U.S. military out there, uh, and we we just we thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for your service. 877-943-9673. Open phone lines. We'll get you and your question right on the show. 877-943-9673. You can call in now. Open phone lines or email me, Patrick at AttorneyPatrickSmith.com. Patrick at AttorneyPatrickSmith.com. But that's no fun. We'd prefer you to give us a call. 877-943-9673. All right. In our This Week at the Law Office segment this week, let's talk about what happened this week at the Law Office. So client comes in and they say, Patrick, I have lost my original will. Don't know where it went. No idea. And this happens from time to time. Clients, uh, sometimes they experience a tragedy, like a house fire or a burglary. More commonly, it's they moved, or sometimes they're getting a little elderly and they just forgot where they put it. So what happens when you lose your will? Well, two different ways to look at it. Losing the will and discovering it while you're still living versus losing the original will and then discovering it or having your beneficiaries and your heirs discover it after you've passed away. Let's deal with the former first. So you've lost the will while you're living and you're dealt with left with a situation where there's a presumption of revocation when the document was known to be in the possession of the testator and if they're passing that's not there, it's presumed that they revoked it. So you have to rebut that presumption by re-executing the will or if it's a trust, restating the trust to sort of breathe life into that lost uh, or in some cases accidentally destroyed, which happens time to time. Clients like to call and say, well, look, I'm going to go through my documents and decide what I need to throw out. Don't do that. Sit down with your attorney if they're legal documents and go through them with your attorney and make sure you can throw them out. Because sometimes clients erroneously throw out documents they need like wills. So the short version is you have to re- vibe or breathe life anew into that document if it's been accidentally lost or destroyed what if you've passed away now you can't 
breathe life into that document anymore because you can't breathe life anymore. You've entered eternity at this point. What are your family's choices that they're left with? Well, if there's no will, uh, they have a copy of it. They can attempt to get the copy admitted, but how do they do that? They have to notify the heirs at law. Now, that may not seem like a big deal because a lot of you are out there in nice, loving, happy family situations, but let's make it not a nice, happy family situation. Let's say you had a will that said everything goes 50-50 to two children, and I'm disinheriting this third child, leaving nothing to them. Original will in place, there's no problem. You just move forward, probate the will, right? If you've lost that original will, and we have to get that copy admitted, the heirs at law must be noticed, including the child who was disinherited under the proposed will. And that's where the contests often start. So that loss of an original will can have bigger echo effects than you realize. Not only do we have the added time and expense of petitioning to get the copy admitted, but it opens the door to a potential contest when an heir at law is noticed of the lost will, and they're given an opportunity to say, no, 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 the will wasn't lost. That was intentionally revoked. So I should get my share as an intestate heir. It opens up that possibility. So losing original documents, highly inefficient to do so. Make sure you have all of your originals. Also, as a side note, make sure you don't write on your originals. Those writings can be taken as attempts to revoke the document. Write on your copies till you're blue in the face, but do not mark on your originals. So that's your lesson on lost or accidentally destroyed wills today. 877-943-9673. The same would apply to trust. For those of you out there saying, yeah, but I have a trust. I have a trust. Same thing. Same logic applies there. It would be a presumptive revocation, and you would need to rebut that presumption with a restatement of your trust. So to be part of our show today, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. I'm your host, local Central Florida attorney Patrick Smith, and this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. You're also welcome to email me, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Dot com. A very special hello to all those of you watching on Facebook Live or Instagram Live. You can always do so. You can check me out at attorneypatricksmith.com. So you can watch the show live. I think we've got the angles because we were getting commentary on which angles people liked the most. I, I didn't get any feedback really on the angle from last week's show because we had the guest, because we had attorney Jared Bailey with us. We had a situation where we had to go super wide with the shot to make sure we got... Uh, Jared in the shot. And as it so happens, we also got Peter the intern. So a lot of you who watched last week got to see what Peter the intern looked like for the first time. So we're working on that. I think we've got it perfected, but if you have any thoughts on camera angles or ways we can make the show better, we're always open to constructive criticism. So you're welcome to give me a call or shoot me an email. People certainly do. Whenever we change an ad photo, I instantly get email saying love the new ad and i get another batch of emails saying we like the old picture better so it's like abe lincoln said all the people some of the time some of the people all the time but never all the people all the time right so we are open to your criticism feel free to reach out to us and let us know if you want to be part of our program today 877-943-9673 877-943-9673 open phone lines we'll get you and your question right on the air again to reach us at our office to schedule a meeting at any of our office locations, including Seminole, Sun City Center, Haines City, Tampa, any of those locations, we will be more than happy to get you scheduled for your complimentary consultation. 877-754-6764. Again, that office line to reach me during the week, 877-754-6764. Our rates for estate planning documents, uh, we publish those rates. I find that a lot of clients are really nervous about what an estate plan is going to cost, what a will is going to cost, power of attorney. So we just publish the rates. And that takes the mystery out of it and removes a lot of the anxiety on the part of the client. So for those of you out there, the consultation is free, first of all. And our basic will, uh, since the day I started my practice until today, has not changed. Still $75 for a will. The power of attorney is $95. The living will document is $50. The trust package, which does include all of those aforementioned documents, our trust package, is $695, and that includes the trust, the poor over will, power of attorney, health care surrogate, living will, deed for the homestead, all included for that one flat rate of $695. And we price it that way to try to make it more economical for everyone because everyone needs a good estate plan. And everyone needs to have a plan in place as opposed to being part of a scenario where you have no plan and then the state swoops in and crafts a plan 
for you. That produces catastrophe on a regular basis. I had a case this last week where spouse died suddenly. It was not a first marriage and no will. And in the light of the fact that there was no will, there's some small cash accounts that the spouse thought were going to go exclusively to them. And when we check the statute, because there's non-common children, we found out it's going to go half to the ch- children and then half to the spouse. So instantly cut it in half. Now, maybe that's what the decedent wanted. We don't know. They didn't put in writing what they wanted. But had they put in writing, we would have known. They would have memorialized that effectively. And that would have put all those issues to bed and saved some family trauma. And the family would have had a little more certainty about what the decedent wanted. So make sure... Uh, that you codify and memorialize your wishes in a current and effective estate plan of whatever variety is most optimal for you and your family. 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of our program today, or you can email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. Again, you can email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. Dot com. So going back to what we started at the top of the show, I just want to encourage everyone to say a very special prayer, not only for the Ukraine, but for all of those in leadership who are involved, our president. There are some tough days ahead for us, I think. And I think it's a situation where messages that were taught to some people in the 80s, were are, are are growing dim in their memories and maybe certain leaders who were you know merely in university back in the 80s and have taken power at this point uh, don't remember uh, the lessons that they had to be taught uh, by the united states of america but it sounds like we may have to teach it to them again and we all need to be on our knees before god because that's where our power comes from And the nation that kneels before God can stand against anyone. And that's how we win this thing. And that's how we help our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. At this point, we're not officially involved, but emotionally and spiritually, we're very much involved in this thing. Because as I said at the start of the show, a threat to freedom anywhere is a threat to freedom everywhere. So if you're out there and you have family in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Belarus, or in that region, know that we are all holding you up in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, we, we, we love you guys. We're supporting you guys. And uh, you have our full support in uh, every capacity that we can. And, uh, and we're praying for you night and day. It's a terrible situation. Uh, all the innocent civilian lives that are being killed right now for absolutely no reason at all. And it's the way Yana said it. You know, if if Putin doesn't fight, there's no war. If the Ukrainians don't fight, there's no Ukraine. So high stakes here, folks, really high stakes. Again, getting a little bit off topic, a little bit political, but it's so current. And I think it would be remiss for us not to address that issue. So next week, who knows what we'll be talking about? Who knows what the week may unfold in terms of legal issues or in developments in the uh, Russia-Ukraine uh, war? So if you want to tune back in next week, we'll give you the latest and greatest as best we can. That number to be part of our program next week, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Again, I'm local Central Florida attorney Patrick Smith with offices in Sun City Center, Seminole, Tampa, uh, Haines City, best to serve you. To reach me at the office, 877-754-6764, or email me, Patrick, at attorney Patrick Smith. Everyone, God bless, stay safe, go Gators, and God bless the Ukraine.